Hi, everybody. It's uh, meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Saturday evening, and I thought we'd go over um, all the things that are going on as far as warnings and advisories are concerned. And what I have up here is the actual current surface map and where you see the, uh, the I guess that's blue. Um, these are winter weather advisories, which have now been extended southward in New Jersey, south of Route 78, back into Pennsylvania, and over Long Island, New York City, all of the Hudson Valley, and all of Southern Connecticut. So basically, uh, along uh, south of Route 84 is pretty much under winter weather advisories, and also you know northeastern Pennsylvania. Now we have this large area of winter storm warnings that are posted for areas north of 84, so for Dutchess, Ulster counties and, and Columbia County and, and, and points northward and Sullivan County as well. And in Connecticut, uh, all the counties north of Route 84 and then you can see all of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont and Maine. This is going to be a, a big snowstorm, <clears throat> certainly for them. Now, one of the things I want you to uh, want, want you guys to look at is, first off, We've got quite the frontal boundary that is set up here. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s across southern Ohio, southern Pennsylvania. Uh, it, it, it may, I'm not sure what town that is here that it's printing the 63 um, in, in southern PA, but you can, you can see how warm it was. Even southern New Jersey made the low 50s today. Now remember, there's no snow cover down here, so uh, that's not a surprise. And uh, when we look further, these are current temperatures, by the way. Uh, we're in mostly in the 50s and, and 60s, even into West Virginia. Now, as we go to the north, we are in the we topped in the mid 40s, but we're already seeing temperatures dropping down into the upper 30s. We're in the low 30s in in northern Connecticut, but look how cold it is across Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. It's in the it's in the mid and upper teens. Now, this is that cold high, the wedge of that cold high that's sitting up to the north, and we are watching this um, because this is all the land of deep snow cover from from storms of the last um, couple of weeks and now of course that deep snow cover you know if you, if you look at this in terms of how the advisories are laid out the um, the snow cover uh, the the important snow cover extends pretty much as far south as where the snow cover is and I think this is going to be a, a key player tomorrow we've got northerly winds uh, just to uh, over us and to our west. So some of this cold air is going to try and drain down how much it, at the bottom part of the atmosphere. So how much remains, how much, how cold it gets remains to be seen, obviously. But, you know, this is one of those situations where the temperatures are in a very, very tenuous position uh, in areas around northern New Jersey, uh, maybe even down to the coast. Uh, I would probably think that at some point the coast will, will go to rain. But, you know, I don't want to completely rule out some, something weird happening. But areas in southern Connecticut and in the lower Hudson Valley, uh, certainly uh, this could be something where, you know, you get snow to sleet to freezing rain and the ground temperatures never get above 31 or 2. Um, you know, this is going to be something we're going to have to pay close attention to with regards to um, Sunday. Now, let's look at the NAM. And what I want to show you here is, this is uh, the uh, these are the this is the 850 millibar level, roughly about 5,000 feet, and you can see uh, right here that's the freezing line, the zero line, and oftentimes the zero line corresponds to where the rain snow line is. Now we're looking at uh, eight o'clock tonight, and you'll notice that at least at that level it just really doesn't move very much, and then tomorrow morning around 10 or 11 o'clock it kind of edges southward into northern New Jersey and over Long Island and then it edges back north as that low develops off the New Jersey coast but you see how it never really gets that far inland and again this is at that level it doesn't say anything about what the ground temperatures could be because uh, even where it's above zero at that level of the atmosphere it could be near or a little bit below freezing at the bottom and then you're dealing with sleet or freezing rain and then once the low moves away and starts to strengthen tomorrow night around 10 o'clock, the cold air behind it starts to come back in. Now, by that time, the precipitation may be already winding down, uh, but we do get cold air coming in on the backside. And then, of course, as the storm really strengthens like crazy east of Cape Cod, you know, then we get that cold air to advect here on Monday. And that's the day that we're going to have some pretty strong northwest winds on the gusting probably on the order of 40 or even 50 miles an hour. 
So, you know, th this is, you know, I'm just, just trying to make the point that uh, the fact that there's all this deep snow cover and this cold air that's, that, that, that especially at the bottom of the atmosphere, that's so tenuously close. It's not like you have a screaming southeast wind that's bringing warm air up from off the ocean. We don't have that. So cold air being a bit more dense may want to try and sink a little further south. So this is the, one of those situations in terms of a in terms of forecasting, where you basically watch it hour by hour. And if we look at the, you know, if you look at the two meter temperatures here uh, by the model. Uh, tomorrow morning, you know, it's in the upper 20s to near 30. Here's the supposed little 32 degree line, okay? And that's tomorrow morning, and then it just kind of straddles. Look, in fact, by um, tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock, it's below freezing uh, across Long Island, even down into central New Jersey. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm nervous here for a number of reasons, maybe not so much for the snow angle of it, but more on the angle of that we could have, you know, some, we could have some sleet and freezing rain. Now, the further north you go, I, I, you know, you're probably going to wind up with no, more snow. And I should also point out that uh, in areas that get all snow, at least in our region here, we're not talking about a situation where somebody's going to wind up with a foot and a half. I mean, this would be something in terms of the amount of moisture that's being generated by the models um, that if it were <clears throat> if it were all snow uh, would be on the order of maybe a half a foot or perhaps a little bit more. But you can see the total precip here, and this is through Monday, so I'm just going to uh, back it up just a little bit, um, is, you know, this is a half to three quarters of an inch. And then you get into three quarters of an inch to an inch of liquid as you go further north. So these areas up to the north have, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're pretty much their snow part of the equation is locked in. So there'll be every bit of six to ten inches in that area. But we're, you know, my primary concern is the area that's in this darker blue. And where are those temperatures going to be uh, during the afternoon at the ground? So I think, you know, freezing rain and some sleet can be, a, you know, is a primary worry for the southernmost areas the further north you go. I think, you know, snow is probably going to be um, more, uh, the more dominant precipitation type, and it's also a lot easier to handle from that standpoint. So I, we have the HRRR model out now to 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, okay? And this is its picture of what it expects precipitation to be overnight. Now, there's this, this, this little arm of rain that it forms uh, before daybreak, and by by five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, it's got sleet. I believe that sleet in the purple. It's hard to tell sometimes with these colors. Uh, sleet and let's say sleet and some freezing rain into western Long Island and over all of New Jersey and northeastern Pennsylvania. And then after that, uh, as the atmosphere cools a bit, uh, we we get uh, the sleet line moving a little further south, and then you can see the blues show up, which would be wet snow and of course it's all snow in the Hudson Valley we're now by the way this is at 10 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning so all snow in the Hudson Valley in Connecticut mostly snow over Long Island mostly snow over North Jersey and snow over New York City so um, this model again only goes out to 18 hours but it certainly would argue the fact that the atmosphere at least for a while tomorrow is going to be cold enough to support frozen precipitation you know when you look at this system from from its from the overall perspective uh, it's not that different from what we went through. I mean, nothing is really the same, uh, but it does tend to rhyme a bit. And the, the difference is that in terms of where this low is developing, you know, you've got this low in southern Pennsylvania. It's tracking a little further north than the other one did, which was a little more in central West Virginia and went off the Maryland coast. You know, this one tries to get, uh, it goes to northern Virginia here and then uh, moves off the New Jersey coast. But... The storm is not has not intensified yet. It has not gone through the the rapid intensification process that it did when when we, with the one on Thursday. So with the storm, if we're rapidly intensifying this position, it would pull down cold air from the north, and we'd have a repeat performance. But instead, that rapid intensification takes place after the low center passes east of Long Island. Now you start to get the deepening. When it's here, it goes here. It is where it's by Cape Cod, and it, it, there is where it explodes. The pressure falls from a 997 low at nine o'clock Monday night to a 971 low, actually a 968 low by one o'clock 
Monday afternoon. So the deepening occurs from here to here as opposed to the other storm that we had from Thursday where the deepening occurred much further south and west. So that, that's where you, that's that that's a huge difference. Otherwise we'd be sitting here, you know, talking snow and uh, and and in feet again in some places rather than uh, what we're dealing with. But, you know, the, with situations as I said, they're not they, they rhyme a bit, they, they're not identical. And the other issue for Monday, by the way, is when you have this intense low in this position and this high pressure to the west, the pressure gradient here is going to be extremely tight. We're going to have uh, strong winds uh, gusting, I would, I would say, on the order of 40 or even 50 miles an hour for a while on Monday. That would not surprise me in the least. So just a quick update on, on this storm. Uh, start times tomorrow will be right around daybreak in most areas, uh, certainly by 9 or 10 o'clock, based on the models of most, uh, just about everybody in the New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Western Connecticut, Northeastern Pennsylvania area uh, will be uh, seeing uh, some precipitate, precipitation of some sort. Now, this is what I went with as I updated my snowfall forecast map this afternoon. So I lowered, I moved the southern flank, uh, the southern line, uh, uh, just uh, uh, the southernmost side a little bit further to the south. So basically, I drew a line from Sandy Hook uh, on up to uh, southernmost uh, central, uh, right through central Hunterdon County, okay, into Pennsylvania. Now, I, you know, I might have this part of the equation overdone in Pennsylvania. Um, it, it, I'm, I, I kind of went off a, a combination of models to get to that. Uh, I may have this a little overdone. The back edge might be a little much, maybe much tighter. Uh, to the north and northeast, and I may have this a little too far south, but I, I basically covered for snow and sleet to rain, and maybe a coating to an inch in this zone uh, for southern Long Island, parts of Long Island and eastern Long Island, and then across this area of Jersey up to about Route 78. Now, from Route 78 north, including maybe northern areas of Long Island, uh, New York City going up to the Bronx, southern Westchester, uh, Bergen County, uh, eastern Passaic County. Uh, northern Morris County, I, I went for maybe one to two inches of snow, and then that two to four inch line running just to the north going into northwest New Jersey, uh, central Westchester County, through Rockland County and points north. Again, the possibility of some sleet or freezing rain getting involved. And then it runs all across through southern Connecticut, uh, one to two inches south of Route 15, two to four north of Route 15 until you get to 84. And then north of 84, I went four to six inches and then just a little bit further north from Poughkeepsie on northward into northwest Connecticut, I went 6 to 10. Now, if I think if there's going to be uh, adjustments, it might be, you know, I don't think the southern uh, extent of this line is going to get much further south than it is. Um, I, I suppose it's possible we could take it down a few more miles to 195. I'm, I'm going to say that the southern extent of this line is, is pretty much where it is. I, you know, we might have to pull these lines either a little further south or a little further north, depending on what the temperatures are and, 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 and the cold air draining southward. You know, if, if I had to guess based on the, you know, past experience in situations like this, that, you know, a lot of the times it winds up being just a little bit colder, that the risk is probably greater to pull that line a little bit, these lines a little bit further to the south rather than further to the north but you know what this is like one of my favorite weather scenarios because you literally you can't really watch the models here the models are kind of useless in, in, to a large degree you know how it's going to play out and now it's going to be a matter of you know basic um, basic meteorology you're going to be looking out your window you're going to be looking at observations and you're going to be watching the radar and you're going to you know your, your forecast is going to essentially live and die on whether your wind is northeast is it is it 04? Is it 05 or 06, where it maybe has a little bit more of an ocean component, or is it going to be more 03 or 02? Remember, there's a deep snow cover through all of this, and that's kind of acting as a bit of a, you know, it's like putting ice in, in into uh, a cooler. It's going to hold the temperatures down to some degree at the bottom part of the atmosphere, which is very cold, um, relatively speaking. I mean, this is not Arctic air, but it's certainly air that. Um, that the system can work with uh, with regards to producing some frozen precipitation so um, everybody have a great evening I'll be doing some Facebook videos live on my Facebook page meteorologist Joe C-I-O-F-F-I and uh, you can 
Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new. Welcome. I hope you've stayed this long. I'm thinking you're you're okay with it. So uh, hit the subscribe button. That's absolutely free, and uh, you'll get a notification when the next video comes up. And just real quick, as far as the long range is concerned, because I know that with all the chatter that was around about Thursday with what the European model did yesterday, and I mean right now, based on what I saw today. Um, the European model has once again spit out a major uh, a major storm that's not going to happen. Um, and and since with all this going, you know, truthful, uh, truthfully, um, with all this going on with this first event, I really have not put my head too deeply into a potential one for later this week. I gave it a very cursory look. Um, so you know, we you know, I may go back and change my mind later. Model runs may start to trend in the other direction because what this storm does, once it goes east of Cape Cod and runs east of Nova Scotia, is going to have an impact on the weather system behind it. So we we, we got to watch. Everything's got to time out a certain way. Um, right now, models continue to say not enough room isn't going to happen. Um, we will uh, we'll visit that. I think after this is done, we have, will have time to go ahead and look at the next one. So everybody have a great evening and we will uh, talk to you soon.